understanding how praise facilitates the fulfillment of prophecies. We heard in the first service where he said, prophecies are divine verdict. They are divine verdict released through the mouth of God's chosen servants. Not everyone that decrees is chosen. Somebody gave a testimony and he said they shall be recovered back. And that stolen vehicle was recovered back. Because prophecies are divine verdicts released through the mouth of God's chosen servants. And I'd like you to get set because something dramatic is coming your way today. That amen is too low. In Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. Second Peter 1 verse 21. The prophecies came not in the old time by the will of man. But by men of God spake as they were moved by God. The prophecy came not by the will of man, but by the will of God through the men of God. The will of God for you is to break limits. Have we ever heard what is called the eleventh hour blessing? Have you ever ever heard what is called the eleventh hour miracle? God's will for you and me is to break the limit that defied others. In Psalm 87 and verse 2, he said, I love Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. I'd like you to know that when God shows you, when God shows Jacob your history and where you are now, it will amaze him in heaven because you are about to break his record. I say you are about to break the record of Jacob very soon. He loves Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Prophecies are not psychological permutations. They are not what we say because of situations. They are what we they are what is said to change situations. They are not what is said because of situations. They are what is released to change the situation of man. As a matter of fact, prophecies channels God's people to where they should look. Tell your neighbor, look where God is showing you. Don't look at what the news is telling you. They say, who what believed our report? Isaiah 53 verse 1. Tell him, he shall see what God says. Don't look at what others are looking at. Look at what God shows you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, call unto me. I want to show you. Call unto me. I want to show you. God's word speaks to our lives. But prophet speaks to our moments. They touch the very core of your present. They touch the very reality of what you are going through. In Second Kings chapter 7 and verse 1, there was famine in the land. Everything was dry. And there came a man of God under the unction. And he said, by this time tomorrow, there shall be abundance for you. The prophecy is released by the mouth of his prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow, there shall be abundance for you. And you and I know the story. The prophecy came to pass because God speaks according to his eyes. God speaks according to his mind. And everything God says is what it means. Look at this. For instance, God has spoken about you that you are to break limit this year. Breaking limit is not just to be a sticker on our vehicles. It is God is saying that you are to be a record breaker. Breaking family records. Nobody went to Harvard. You are about to go there very soon. You are ordained to break the record your parents could not break. 
Now hear this testimony. There is a sister called Jane E. According to Jane E, he had a word. The prophetic move came. That if you run with the prophecy, God will change your life around. According to her testimony, the prophecy came and she did nothing. Then again came the next prophecy. That within three months, everyone that moved for soul winning will have abundance. And according to her testimony, she said, I died for the move. Ask your neighbor, are you diving for God's agenda? What's he saying? After this service, we shall see the soul you brought in Jesus' name. Then he says something. He said, I die for the move. We are not to drag with the move. We are to die for it. Every diving believer shows desperation. Every dragging believer is not thirsty enough. He said, come to me, how you are thirsty. Have you ever seen a thirsty man before? Especially if you are in the days in Bono, Madukuri, in the days of it, as a youth copper, I can never forget those days. In that village, there came some time that we were in the heat period. And at night season, I saw my friends coming out with their water. And they came close to the mattress. What are you about to do? He said, we are about to splash the mattress with water. <laughs> Hear me. I never believed I could do that. But when I saw the heat, the intensity, I woke up and applied the water on my bed. And three times I did before morning. And this we did for so many days. When you see a mat who is thirsty in the heat, he goes for water at all costs. Ask your neighbor, are you desperate for a change? Are you a diving believer? If all of us go for one soul, now the church will feel this coming Sunday. But the thing is, some are going to be dragging. Some will not move. And some will be diving. But I pray this morning that you shall be numbered among the diving believers. Jenny said she died for the move. And in a short while she said, God gave her a thousand percent above the previous profit she had been making. That is, she broke the limit that she had before. Maybe you are here, you are in a one-room apartment. Don't dwell there. Get set to move forward. Hello? Don't target any member to help you. Target souls for God to help you. Every man needs help. Only God is the helper. This morning I pray, as you are listening to the word, you are doing the word in Jesus' name. God's servant is coming. Guess it? Somebody's vehicle was lost. And it came back in five, seven days. You know why? Everything God say, God is under obligation to command and to defend. That's why I know today that this coming Sunday, you are going from that one room to a new apartment in Jesus' name. Yeah. You are leaving that small job to a better job in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, what do we do to ensure that this prophecy come to pass? We have been told in the first service that we are to receive the prophecy. Receiving the prophecy is what shows that you believe what you are saying. That you believe what God is saying. John 1.12 says, as many as receive, they become what they receive. And those who truly receive are those who run with it. In the race of life, when you receive, you must run. Receiving without running shows you have not received. And in the race of life, only runners are those permitted to break limits. The life we are in is a marathon race. And only those who run to the end break the limit. But one way to run is by giving God praise. One way to run the race. Every man is running. But some are complaining. 
And some are giving God praise. I have said again and again, I used to be a general in the school of complaining. I complained and I knew I had a rank. But God himself said to me one day, your tongue is why you are tied down there. Tell your neighbor, don't let your tongue tie you down. Don't let your tongue tie you down. And we saw in the Bible in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and from verse 17, a whole battalion was running the race by singing. You never heard that in a war, people go and dance. People fight, they don't dance. But this is called a praise warfare. He said, you shall not fight in this battle. That's a prophecy. Set yourself, stand ye still, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Why? He said, but the Lord is with you. He said, for this time tomorrow, he shall take over. And in verse 20, they began to sing and to praise. Our singing is not entertainment. Hello? When you are in a war front, you don't check your lipstick. When you are in a war front, you don't check how fine your English is. When you are in a war front, you fight to win. And one way to fight is by praising God. We are not entertaining God. Angels are entertaining Him. We are praising Him and fighting our war. Tell your neighbor, get set to fight today. Get set to praise God today. In Psalm 119 verse 162, David said, I rejoice at the war that comes to me, like a man who finds great spoil, great treasure. We all know treasures. Now he says, as a great spoil. A version says, as a great spoil. A great spoil is like a loot. Something so big. They are poor. They are sweated. And you know the case of David. Several times he had gone to war. Almost killed. But by the grace of God, he came back triumphant. And so he celebrated the war. As people celebrate their vehicles, as they celebrate the good things they have, they celebrate the good thing they have because they have seen it. We celebrate the word we have received because we believe it. Somebody is here today. Whatever God's servant declare over you, under three days is coming to pass in Jesus' name. I can't forget a man who shared a testimony. We know the testimony. He was into fish business. And there came some fellow to, who came and borrowed his fishes and left him five. They borrowed the fish eternally. They took the fishes away and left him with five little fishes. Now don't forget that Jesus saw a little boy that had five loaves of bread and two fishes. When he saw the stuff he knew what to do and he gave god thanks in john 6 15 1 to 15 and what he had multiplied and fed everybody and this man said when i saw they have stolen my fishes i did not break down in my heart you see when you break down in your heart you can't see the prophecy again and that's why he said guard your heart thank god this man guarded his heart and he said, I refuse to break down. And I came to a Sunday service, had a word on praise. And he began to give God praise. Now, this happened in November. Hello? And testimonies are replicatable. Hello? This month is your month in Jesus' name. According to his testimony, in the month of November, he lost it. But yet, he began to give God praise. And in three months' time, the five fishes became 25 heavyweight fishes. Now hear me. After that encounter, God now brought to him a foreigner. And this foreigner began to trade with him. He went from a local champion to a global champion by praise. Somebody is here today. They are calling you from Switzerland from today. They shall call you from Australia very soon. They are calling you from Ghana very soon. 
In the name of Jesus. Papa says every complainer ends up a convict. Hello. Everyone that complains end up a convict. In the case of Abraham, he was not a complaining man. He was a singing Abraham. Romans 4.16, we had earlier. Abraham was strong in faith, giving all the glory to God. He refused to allow what he sees to break him down. He knows that praise can go to shape his life. Listen to me. Every time you praise him intensely, you have a raise. A raise from what limits others. A raise from what is holding others down. And I have good news here today. Today is our covenant day of breaking all barriers. The one you see are the one you can see. And I know something. Before the sun is over today, whatever barrier standing before you is over in Jesus' name. A barrier could be an object like a fence. A fence that is limiting your advancement. It could also be a mental barrier. There are some who say, who dash monkey banana? They have a mental barrier. That barrier says, who am I? That barrier says, oh boy, it's not easy. You. They say to that man, you don't have money. He said, no, not me. I will show you who I'm serving. And today he's standing on the altar, giving glory to his father. Mental barriers is why many can't go. Why? They say, I can't. When you say, I can't, it shuts down your system from going forward. When you say, I can't do it, it shuts you down from moving forward. But I have good news for you here today. Everything that is limiting you shall be destroyed here today in Jesus' name. The third level is the most dreaded. The spiritual barriers. Invisible barriers. The one you can see. You know it happened. Something is going on. But you can't say it. Somebody gave a testimony. And according to him, he had a dream. And in that dream, somebody caught his ear. And from that day, his business came down. From that day, everything came down for him. But blessed be the God of this commission. This man knew that there is a way forward. Tell your neighbor, there is always a way in God. He said he knew there is a way forward. And when the time came, this man gave his life to Jesus. If you are not born again and they cut your hair, that hair can crush you. Hello? The powers of the unseen world is real. There are incantations. There are remote control. That the man will just be moving like a mumu. He won't know what is moving. Why is moving? He will think he's just the one moving, but they are remoting him. Remoting his life, his destiny. But hear me, according to his testimony, he began to come to this church. And he said, after a while, my faith skyrocketed. I stopped wasting my precious time. And I began to plug into the world, to soul winning. Now hear me, this man had 150 naira as his last card. Hello? That can't buy you a loaf of bread, can it? That can't buy you a loaf of bread. 150 naira last card. But he said, on his way home, God connected him to somebody in the church. And somebody said that you may have come here begging for transport, but you are going back lending to nations. This was what happened to this man. He came with his 150 last card. But according to his testimony, he said right as he was going home, God connected him. He did not target any man. God connected him. And the God who connected him said, it will make him to rise to the top. And according to his testimony, he says, God gave him a contract worth millions of naira. Are you clapping for Jesus? He gave him a contract worth millions of naira. And everything turned around for him. 
Now, quickly, what are we to do to ensure that the barriers are broken? Number one, ensure that you are redeemed. Ensure that you are redeemed. Redemption gives you the right to clear the barriers. Ensure that you are redeemed. Isaiah 52. And in verse 1. Isaiah 52. And in verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, the holy city for henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Salvation, redemption, helps you to break the invisible barriers. I have seen, I have heard, I have experienced some dangerous things. But hear me, when you are born again, you are not born to be alone. You are born to have a backing. It's the backing that gives you assurance. If you are not born again today, if they cut your hair today, no guarantee for you. But I pray today, as you have come here now, whatever has defied others, whatever has limited the advancement, is given way for you today in Jesus' name. Finally, what do I do? Fight for your right with your light. Non-fighting believers end up losing. There was war in heaven, and God, the maker of man, fought. He fought. And in Revelation 12:12, 12, 12, it says, Rejoice ye that dwell in heaven. So for Satan has left heaven. But for you to enjoy the reality of heaven, you have to fight. First Timothy 6:12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. The fightings over sleeping at night is a sign of non-fighting. When you sleep from 9 to 6, you have slept too much. Hello? A man who knows that life is going, dragging him down, and who slept from 9 to 6 is not a fighting man. We are to fight according to the light we are. We saw Abraham, the man who was fighting. The fight was not by his emotions. It was the fight of faith. Habakkuk 2.4 The just shall live by his faith, not by his emotions. Emotions may delay your movement. If you just let your emotions take over your life, they will delay your movement. But I pray this morning, anyone under the torment of wrong emotions, you are loose today in the name of Jesus. Everyone under the torment of wrong emotions, causing the barrier to stay with you, you are loose today in the name of Jesus. As I close, every invisible barrier bows to God's word. Every. Every. The barrier that didn't move before. But now you have come here, and you dare to believe like Joshua, like Gideon. You dare to believe that things can change for you because you are set to fight. The barriers himself, a man of God said, he said some barriers you push. He said some barriers you move back. You close your eyes and you run like a madman. He said if you get to that barrier to move for you, most barriers are like mirage. When you are going on a road, you look afar, it seems as if you are seeing water. Sometimes this is what we are seeing. And we think we can't break through. We think we can't go forward. But hear me? Whatever has been a threat to your family, because you have appeared here this morning, they are going down for you in the name of Jesus. I said they are going down for you in the name of Jesus. Some sisters were tied down for 50 years. Why? A man came to the father when they were young and said, I would like to marry your daughter. It's like a joke now, so how can you marry my daughter? But this man meant it. And after some time, the man began to say, if I don't marry your daughter, no man marries there. The cause came. Like play, like play, that cause began. They became born again, but the cause still remained. And one day they came to a service like this. Their faith caught fire. Tell your neighbor, let your faith catch fire today. 
their faith caught fire and then the demon blocking their movement was destroyed and after that thing three sisters got wedded somebody is here between now and april 2021 you are fully wedded in jesus name as i close except you are saved you can't break barriers in fact if you try to break the barrier they will slap you again they are invisible you can't see them but when you are born again you become invisible too spiritual and power to break limits rise up on your feet lord i believe that this day is my day every barrier is coming down before me every barrier is going down before me no barrier survive this day in my life no barrier survive this day in my life are you decreeing he said whatever you say is what i would do are you speaking to your destiny the will of god for you came by the prophecies god wants to change he wants to turn things around for you speak to him speak your way to the peak oh god this day i decree every barrier move for me that invisible barrier of childlessness enough move today i command you in the name of jesus all the barrier move for me now all of them clears off now i'm coming back next sunday with my testimony thank you heavenly father glory be to your name in jesus name we pray all eyes closed all eyes bowed except you are born again you are not set to break the limits but god is calling unto you he wants to change your life he wants to carry that weight for you just one word you are here you are not born again just say where you are lord jesus i come before you this morning i know you died for me and you rose again for me therefore today i surrender my life to you from this morning take over my life take over everything about me and let this invisible barrier come to an end thank you heavenly father glory be to your name in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray if you have said that prayer